come ogni, sapete che la School of Innovation è un programma di, di Open Innovation globale, quindi non, non è soltanto italiano, e quindi nel nostro ciclo di, di iniziative eh, naturalmente cerchiamo di mantenere, questo, di darci questo tono eh, internazionale. Abbiamo oggi come ospite Javier Quintana Rios, che, viene, eh, che, che è il, il South EMEA Partner Manager di Sitecore, che viene a raccontarci dal suo punto di vista eh, che, quali sono i trend, quali sono le aspettative che oggi i, i consumatori hanno nel momento in cui si affacciano eh, agli, ai servizi digitali di un'azienda. Welcome, we're, uh, we're going to do this in English. Uh, if you no, 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 no apologies. Uh, so, uh, as usual, as before, please feel free to, to, jump, in the feel free to jump in the conversation uh, and join us in the, in the middle, uh, in the middle okay. please. <clears throat> so, uh, I would start maybe, Javier, uh, from uh, having you explain uh, what you do in your role of EMEA Partner Manager. So, so uh, you know, uh, for, for, for those of you who don't know Sitecore is, uh, a, a, they call it uh, experience platform. So it's it's a, a digital a digital experience platform. So uh, what does what does the South EMEA Partner Manager do for Sitecore? So so my, my, my role belongs to the Alliance team, and I am um, serving different countries in South, including Spain, Portugal, Italy, France, Greece, Israel, Turkey. So. I'm traveling a bit. Um, and my role is to help the partners to understand and to embrace new technologies, obviously, or, or technologies, to speed up the customer experience through their projects. So I mean, uh, there isn't a team behind. It's not obviously me. But our, our, my role is to inspire the partners about the possibilities they have by combining their expertise the footprint in an industry with the techno new technologies to promote, to develop new projects, new trends, or to uh, consider new opportunities in the market. Uh, thank you. That's, that's great. Uh, and today we are talking about artificial intelligence, of course, because that's trendy. And, but also we're talking about artif artificial intelligence from a specific point of view, which is the point of view of the customer experience. So, so how artificial intelligence is shaping or will be shaping the, the, the customer journey in some way. So fr from this perspective, uh, my, my ask for you is, since you have got this very broad, so you, you, you travel a lot, that's, that's the minus, but you have, uh, you are exposed to a number of different cultures and a number of, this, uh, of different uh, projects. So from your perspective, this high perspective, uh, what do you see happening in the market about this? So do you see there's any specific trend which is shaping out in the market uh, that companies are following or pursuing or, or customers really have? So what's changing? So I, um, first of all, AI topic is a hot topic everywhere, at least in the south, in the countries I'm, I'm visiting, I'm serving. Every, every, any single company, independently of the segment, medium, large, very large, is considering AI. Um, they have in mind lots of things to do, but with the different topics you have been discussing so far, so liabilities, responsibilities, impacts. So this is in place, so, but specifically to my, my area, so the customer experience, um, the most relevant topic is about Gen AI, so generative AI, because AI is a quite generic word. We can apply, as we have discussed, AI for many different things, but generative AI is uh, the most relevant topic. And I would like to highlight maybe the three main areas there or topics they are exploring. So cost saving and time response, how to, Generative AI can provide better solutions, better results for this, and I will go through a bit. <laughs> then, hyper personalization. So, to make this dream happen, such they are thinking when uh, 
some of our grandpas were young and they were in the shopkeeper and the shopkeeper knows them very well and they were able to offer uh, unto God what they really were looking for. And third is the customer service. So savings, hyper personalization, and customer, ser customer um, service. The first is related with uh, automate uh, low value tasks and how they can speed up the go-to-market. So you're referring probably more to the kind of back office kind of tasks, you mean? Yes, uh, in, some, in some way and in some others to get an uh, assistant to inspire them. So let me put some examples okay. about what, what, what we are doing or what we are uh, facing with some of our partners and customers in, in, in South. So it's people, obviously there is an, uh, an a barrier, and maybe we can discuss about this later, is the technology stack. Because if the technology can provide you some benefits, maybe you are not able to, to jump as a child as you would like on this. But so content creation. So how to use ChatGPT. You have been talking a bit about ChatGPT. Or there are a lot of other AI engines such uh, for media, such Dali from Microsoft as well, or Midjourney. There are loads of them. So how they can take advantage of these solutions to speed up the content creation, so how they can inspire their teams to be relevant for the audience according to the market trends, patterns, and the digital footprint that this visitor has been uh, leaving through his visits to the different touch points we are offering them, so the website, the, the social media, the, an email, so how they can get this, analyze, and speed up the content creation to be relevant on the next touch point, the sooner the better. So this is the first thing. So instead of, okay, this guy has been, or this person has been visiting this and doing this, okay, what's the next article I should provide or I should create, or what is the content and the picture I should put in this specific place to be relevant for, the, for, for, for him or for her again in the next visit? This is a shortcut, so AI can be a shortcut to create this uh, light speed and make this next impact relevant. Second is related to this, the hyper personalization. We have some partners that they can create some, some stuff, and I, I'm not gonna disclosure because I'm gonna ask you something. They can create some stuff on the fly. For instance, um, on a landing web page. How long takes uh, the creation of an, a landing page for you? Do you use three hours? Landing, three hours, a landing page. And a landing page. So if you need to create a landing page for a campaign, for a new product, for a new service. Yeah, all this stuff. Three hours, okay. It's an average response. <laughs> hmm. Is there any, anybody using landing pages? No, okay. okay. <laughs> free, free, let's, let's say that the average is three hours. That's the exact average. Okay. I've got responses from other countries. Uh, public administration in Portugal, six months. Uh, from a rental car company in Spain, it's three up to four months. So manufacturing company in France, it can take one year. They can have to plan and to consider all the steps. So we have partners doing this in less than 30 seconds, combining ChatGPT plus our components. And maybe, I'm sorry for you, you are building a static landing page. So you have a defined template with some images. Maybe if you are lucky and you have good resources, you can have some text, different variants of the text, different variants of the images, and according who is the person you are sending or is landing, you can select if they will be the model A, B, or C. But what about if we want to combine real, or to take the real benefits of an AI? So what about if I am visiting your website, I am querying some information, even I am registering to your newsletter, and then I'm leaving the session. But then, if you have the right tools, you should be able to take my footprint 
to consider if I am reading information about this product, this product, or this product. And if you are sending to me an email because of the newsletter, instead of having a template with a uh, model A, B, or C, considering my previous footprint, my interest, what I've been reading, you can create on the fly a unique landing website for me with a uh, content created on the fly through ChatGPT and the images related to the product or services I've been querying according to my profile. So this makes the possibility to create unique and very personalized uh, engagement experiences, landing pages, whatever you like, per person, not per audience. So th this is very interesting. So, so basically, what you, what you say is say that this hyper, there is a trend. This trend is hyper-personalization, so being very, very, very personal on the communication that, mm -hmm. you, that you do with, with customers, uh, which typically implies you know, some work to define audiences. Maybe there are 10 audiences. You said three audiences, but can be really vary a lot, right? Exactly. And now what you're seeing is that, is that basically it's possible, and companies are starting doing this, uh, to, be, to send unique messages. So unique uh, with respect to the history that they have. So the, the history of interactions that they have with you as a company, let's say. So let's say I come to your website, as you mentioned, I register. So I've got some interactions. And based on this, uh, the concept is, uh, you, you mentioned it, like you, you retrieve like a, a signature of my history with the company. And based on this, the algorithm is able to generate a message which is unique for me, basically. Uh, one question I have about this, which is really unprepared, no, no, pre no unprepared question, is uh, and to what extent do you think or do you see uh, enterprises have control on the output that they generate to these customers? So how can they, how, or, or how do you suggest them to control that? So it depends on the industry. Obviously, so it depends on, on the different services and products they can provide to the market, so how they can control the outputs and how easy for them is to convert this output in an opportunity or in a sale. But uh, definitely, so this is an uh, infinite loop, let me say. Uh, the closing or the final step should be the, or the discard opportunity or the sell, the closing, the one. Mm -hmm. but Definitely. So if, if, you are, if I'm sending to you an, a unique URL mm -hmm. for you, according to your preferences, with an, a unique text, let me drop a different example. So you are, on, you are on the website. I am visiting your website, and I am querying your content. And I would like to know more about you, about this specific, okay, well, about your blog. So you are you are offering to me on a blog with articles related to your products, to your services, to whatever you are doing, but in a blog because you are proposing to me something different with according to your point of view. Is there all the articles with all the possibilities there? I don't think so. So what about to create on the fly this blog page just for you? Obviously then technology can limited or unlimited you, because this content can be created once and disappear. Then if the person visit again, oh, it can be different, then you are in a tricky position. Or you can store this, and if the person visit again the same article, you can provide the same, but amplifying the message. So, I mean, we can control and we are offering the customers different tools and solutions to complete the journey always under the hyper personalization message. Because at the end, what the people, all of us, would like to be treated unique. So let me drop again the example of our grandpas. At least my grandpa always explained me that you have listened the same in a business school or from the family. When they went to, when they were young and they worked for an, uh, shopping and the shopkeeper just saying, hey, Javier, how are you? Know what they want. You want milk, you want this type of bread, you want this type of meat, and they prepare the basket. You need basket. And this guy, the shopkeeper, avoid wine, avoid eggs, because you know about this. They have there, but they have prepared the basket for you. So 
We want the same. We want to be treated as a unique, as the person knows me. So we are providing solutions, tools, and guidance about, okay, how to rebuild this experience again on the digital space, being able to create unique experiences, even with content created on the fly through engines such as GPT, DALI. So we have a, a customer in Middle East that they, can, they are running loads of campaigns on the travel hospitality. And they have a good engagement with some audiences on the promotions they're doing. But what about if the other segment, quite close to this, is not engaging as the first segment? Can they create on the fly on a second campaign immediately with an abandon of the image? They don't want to spend time thinking on, okay, what's going to be the content, what's going to be the image? So if, if this campaign is a winner, can DALI create an, a variant of this image? But if the audience is younger, can you create with an, uh, some colors or some stuff for audience, considering the younger audience, and then changing the tone of the wording to engage better with the young people? Yes, we can. How long this takes? Seconds. So this is what we are doing and how we are recommending the companies to connect and to think about the possibilities they have. That, that's, very, that's very interesting. And uh, about the interaction uh, of uh, people and AI, you know, in this journey, so is there anything you suggest to the companies that you advise in terms of, you know, there is a shift probably in the work they do because they don't prepare 1,000 campaigns. They prepare like free. So, so there is a shift in, in the work they're doing from doing you know, repetitive kind of work, just selecting audiences and this kind of stuff. How do you, how do you suggest them to apply their time now in taking this decision around you know, new, new formulas uh, or campaigns that they are going to publish with the generative AI? Is there you know, some, I don't like to call them best practices, but yeah. advices that you provide? Yeah, so before starting with these suggestions, recommendations on the best practices, there are some, some considerations that any company have to think about it. So it's like another decision chain. So what are the processes or what are the pain points I have that I would like to solve with AI? This is first. So what are, where, where, where we are weak and uh, if we think that these weaknesses can be fixed with AI, Second, what's the cost behind? Because um, this is not for free, guys. So obviously there is an, uh, an, a counterpart. So it's nice to have ChatGPT, it's nice to have DALI, but there are something called tokens that the company has to pay for. And uh, it's a bunch of money behind. So you have to be very, very smart by thinking on, okay, how to apply this in order to make this more relevant for me. Third, what are the resources? in terms of tech stack, what is my current tech stack? Is flexible enough? Do I have the data set already built? Is good enough? Because as you mentioned, data set is key. And then fourth, what about the people? My team, the team on the company, is ready to understand and to embrace this without an risk? Without an risk created in-house? because of they are afraid, because they don't understand the business, because we are not, as a company, able to follow what this new AI trend can provide to the company. So it's like to put in a big engine on the car, but what about the rest of the car? Will be the car ready to work faster, or we will have some problems during the way? So this is a, some considerations we have to think. We have a question. Okay, yeah. thank you very much. So, if I follow your uh, thinking, so if I have uh, the uh, web page about, uh, I don't know, a car, okay, uh, you can have in front of you a customer that is looking more for emotion, and maybe you, you customize the landing page with more videos related to emotions and so on, or you have a customer maybe that is more technical and would like to understand a lot of technical details. Exactly. 
So in that case, you understand the customer and you uh, readapt the page. But if you think about, for example, uh, the, the landing page for a retailer, uh, like, uh, I don't know, Esselunga or uh, Coop, I don't know, selling uh, different uh, food uh, products. Uh, in that case, uh, so we have, uh, for example, traditionally we have the physical place. Mm -hmm. So you go and you know that uh, based on uh, where is placed the products, uh, okay, so there is a different uh, business model. Mm -hmm. okay? Uh, then the second step has been the online uh, uh, web store, so where uh, there is, uh, so you have uh, your staff, you can select what you want and so on. Thinking, uh, and there is another business model probably. Thinking what you said, I will go to Esselunga or whatever, and uh, there will be a new mechanism of suggesting uh, what I should buy, mm -hmm. uh, based on uh, who I am uh, and so on. Um, with the risk of, uh, first of all, uh, standardizing uh, my, my way to buy. So starting to buy always the same products. Because if you go physically in a place, you see the other stuff. In that case, if everything starts to be standardized around me, the risk is that uh, I start to buy always the same stuff. Probably it will not happen, because there will be some mechanisms to suggest you know, and so on. So my question is, uh, what is the business model, the new business model behind this kind of uh, uh, new type of interaction? Uh, a, a Tetra Pak customer, I don't know, Granarolo, that, uh, uh, sorry, you are not familiar. No, no worries, no worries. So, you know, you can, so you can, you can uh, like Pasquale. You can imagine, yeah. Okay, that is uh, selling uh, the brick with the milk. Uh, how can they become part of the suggestion? Or, uh, or, uh, or is a pure uh, uh, mechanism that is uh, thinking uh, really only about you? But you so where is, uh, where is the relation with the, with the business? So business-wise, you, you mentioned different topics. You understand what I mean? I mean? The risk is that me as a brand, I'm cancelled from, I mean, I go physically to the shop, I see all the different brands, mm -hmm. so I decide. Yep. But if there is a mechanism that only show me only part of the shelf. But it's, it's, it's not exactly like you mentioned. So obviously, obviously, if I know you, I can suggest you price discounts on the products you normally buy mm -hmm. with the same brand, with the same format. But what about if me as a retailer supermarket. We have other options. The, provide, the suppliers, they are offering me as well as a uh, retailer campaigns, promotions that they can launch through your platform, the platform. So you will receive a newsletter from a uh, supermarket and you will have related products or suggested products. These products are more convenient for the supermarket than the one you want to buy because different purposes. So I mean, it's obviously we can prepare the basket for you according to your preferences, but we can introduce alternative products, campaign considerations, etc., in order to speed up. So what I want to say is, and taking your example, if I am on a, let me say, new player in the market with a new milk, and I go to a supermarket, well-known supermarket, my, what is the cost for me to be relevant in the supermarket in a competition against other brands? If we want to be on the high shelf, on the vision line, what's the cost? Can be high. I am new in the, in the, in the, in the space. Maybe it's a Spanish brand jumping into the Italian brand market. So, but, but what about is the cost doing the same on digital? And not for all the ages, because it can be very specific, because if you are in the physical store, you are under the campaign for everybody who goes through the, the shell, the ale and the shelf. But you want to be more specific. You, have an, uh, you are on uh, soy milk or animal milk, and you are considered an, a good brand for healthy people. Let me put this easy. And you want to be relevant for people from this age to this age that they normally visit Instagram on the afternoon from 7 to 10. What's the cost of this? I bet it's less than go to the physical store. Where is the conversion? 
you never know, can be done in the physical store or can be done in the, on digital. But if you have tools and you are promoting this campaign for a specific area in Milan or in Bologna, you can see what is the difference between the, the week before, the week after to launch the campaign. This is the business. Yes, if I can, uh, if I can add from this, from this uh, discussion, maybe uh, stay if you like. Uh, don't worry, you don't have to go away. Um, so this means it, it's not about the journey itself. So the, the example that, that you were making right now is, okay, so we can, we can design a new journey for your customer. That's perfect. And that's going to be absolutely unique and individual. Mm -hmm. uh, but the business logic behind that, so, so to say the, the strategy that you adopt is going to be more complex because you need to think beforehand. So it's not just automatic, you know, targeting kind of stuff. Uh, you, need to, you need to put together the business strategy or commercial sales strategy, if you will, market strategy, together with the opportunity of building, of generating unique campaigns. Mm -hmm. so, so there is a new, uh, a whole new kind of uh, type of job probably, uh, which is to understand the strategy and to ensure that you instruct in a, the, the proper way uh, the machine in order to produce, to generate content that drives sales exactly. using this strategy. If I understood the whole, the whole picture, yeah. the whole picture, right? Yeah, so it's it's correct. So the, the data has been key every any time, but uh, by then was relevant because of the KPIs. Mm -hmm. So uh, it was good to know if the finance were well or not so well. What are the margins? What are the cost of my production? But what about today? We, we want to jump on the digital and to do the digital journey close as the physical journey, mm -hmm. we need to understand what is my opportunity. So if we are able to understand what is the digital footprint that any visitor is leaving in any digital touch point I'm providing, social network, an email, and a digital event, whatever, and we are able to, to analyze this, and we have the right tools to create content on the fly, this is an opportunity. And this is because of the data. But don't think only on the campaigns. And a company adopting AI can change the behavior of their brand, how, to, how is the relationship between our brand and the audience. Let's put another example. So companies with an, uh, tons of content in the website, insurance company, and a bank, public administration, telco. So uh, much, more, much more, but let me pick these examples because Everybody knows them. How difficult is to work with them? How difficult is to manage and to find the process to follow, to uh, do some stuff, or to change something? Or where is this? What about AI? If AI, if I can talk now in natural language within a website, and the AI is able to provide me the response, not because of the big data, because of the content that is in the website, so this is changing. And if I am able to talk with a website in natural language, can I extend my audience? Can I put the elders now in game with my brand? Because then it was impossible for them to make it. 70, 80 years old people, can they know how to make it with Google? I think so. Are they agile enough to book an uh, online trip? I don't think so. But what about if they can talk natural language, just texting natural language to do some stuff? I am increasing my audience? Yes? Yeah, possibly, yes. Uh, so, but that's a, that, that's a journey for companies. I mean, uh, we're not yet there, not, not some of us, so we'll see examples afterwards. Uh, but not all companies are here at this stage, right? So. Uh, what are the challenges that you see for companies that want to adopt AI this way uh, in order to you know, deploy their strategy f through, their digital, uh, through their digital means? First thing is 
to, to do this previous analysis. So first thing is, okay, I would like to apply AI. It's like I want to buy a uh, smartphone, but I don't know how to use it. I don't know what I, what I need on a an uh, smartphone. So I, I want it once, but I don't know if I'm gonna take advantage of. So first is this, is this exercise. Second is the tech stack they have. Technology is flexible enough. My current tech stack as a company is flexible enough you know, to adopt an uh, AI component or is in a kind of silo. Because normally what the companies have is in a quite silo. Very good what, with the content and with the features in, but very difficult to integrate with. And sometimes the information that this uh, monolithic solution has is quite blind for the other, other softwares that they want to connect with. So, what is my pain? What is my real pain? First, first thing that the companies are thinking, because they want to use AI, but they have to do this real analysis. Second is, what about my current tech stack? Is flexible enough to connect with an AI solution? Third, what, what about the people? Is the people, the team, ready to embrace these new projects? Is the people able to understand that they are not gonna be replaced by this technology, that they are gonna have a new mate in the team working with them and providing them new features? Obviously, this requires to re-skill the team. So we don't need people to uh, create and to think hours like an editor for an article. No, no, no. You can be more effective. So let's take advantage of this AI. Let's create a template, and on top of this template, that can guide you and can, can have some ingredients relevant for the audience we want to engage or for the person we want to engage. Then you can add your brand. You can put your uh, things, but not starting from scratch. Starting from some ingredients relevant for the content we want to create. But this is a very tough exercise that the companies uh, need to manage. From an employee perspective. Exactly. Okay. Francesca. Javier, um, when, when you were talking about uh, hyper-personalization, uh, I was thinking, how might uh, we hyper-personalize uh, uh, a web page uh, to uh, make it accessible for different uh, types uh, of disabilities. Uh, you were talking about text, uh, and immediately I thought about uh, cognitive impairments and the text uh, possibly to be adopted, uh, uh, having in mind mm -hmm. this type of disabilities, but uh, we, we have many different uh, color blindness uh, and blah, 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 you know, better exactly. than me. So that's, that's the question, because uh, given also uh, the, the European Accessibility Act uh, that mm -hmm. uh, is uh, going to be in place by June uh, 2025, this is a very hot topic for companies. Exactly. So mm -hmm. this is a very good point, Francesca, because if you don't have this, you don't have the ability to embrace this kind of technology because of your, the limitations you may have with your current tech stack, maybe you need to recreate all the content you have in place for the different types of dis uh, disabilities that the, your visitor may have. If you are able to connect some AI solutions, this content can be created on the fly and can, can be created accordingly to all the different specifications. So I am Daltonic. So, okay, don't put any word in these colors. Don't put the, the images in these colors. Switch on the fly by, I don't know, grace. Okay, I am not able to read or to understand this part or I need an, a more uh, simple, and a summary of the content because I am TDA. Okay, let's do it. Is under regulation? I don't know if it's all the, all the different types of disabilities are under regulation, but can we embrace all the people to work with me? And can this make me more relevant for the audience? Can create an, a brand awareness? I don't want to take advantage of this because it's not, let me say, in a good way. But maybe being, doing my website more open for anyone, we can be relevant and we can be the first one doing 
and a kind of pattern for the others, embracing the same and doing the digital world more open to any person. Great. Uh, so we can create the best uh, experience ever for an individual, exactly. basically, according Exa to exactly. that individual. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And without tons of content, be prepared without uh, the previous understanding of if never it's going to be used. Mm -hmm. That is normally what happens. We create tons of contents, tons of variants, and some of them, they are just there, never used. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, okay, I have a question. It's slightly provocative. Uh, in the approach that is a data-informed decision taken on the website, isn't that we are creating a slavery for the brand? The brand is slave for what people want. But sometimes I don't have an opinion, and I have good to get what the brand gives to me. Because maybe it looks cool on someone else, and I want to be like the someone else, even though I'm not as fit as the guy, okay? But the fact that the brand is proposing me, someone is very cool dressing the dress shirt, and that won't fit as well on me, but I want to be like him. Mm -hmm. So, in this case, I don't want to be the one who tells the brand, give me what I want, but brand, please, give me you what you want, because I trust you or because you have a good taste, and I think that your taste make me, make me feel happy. So, this is my provocation. Is it good to be so data obsessed sometimes. I mean, I see the business case, but sometimes I'm wondering, is it so healthy and profitable, or sometimes it's good to give some space to undetermination? And pick this one, because you will look so good in this. Even though you think you don't, it will good so look on you. That's my provocation. Isn't a good point, but being honest, this is what we have been facing and watching on TV since early 80s. And I expect no one from Coca-Cola here, from Coca-Cola. Anybody, everybody knows Coca-Cola, right? Yeah. There are other cola fresh drinks, cheaper than cola, with a flavor and taste close to cola, right? Coca-Cola can, in a supermarket, can cost one dollar, one euro, I don't know. But you have white levels and other brands 50% off the price. What's your choice? Because you don't buy, you don't buy the, you don't buy the product. You buy the experience. You look cool if you have an a cola. You look crappy if you have an a label, no cola in your hand. So what are the young people buying? The dreams of the California girls, boys on the beach being cool. This is the same. So. Is the brand saying what you have to do? Even if you are not in this group, but you will be out of the society if you are in the street drinking a white level cola brand. We have a question there from Flavia, uh, but I take advantage of this moment. She's coming to say that uh, we are in a, in a moment in time right now that they call uh, the, the moment of the AI influencers. So we are in a moment where on Instagram, on different platform, this AI fake, completely fake profiles of, of Instagrammers are, are showing up. And that's the, the response to your, uh, to, your, um, to your thinking because companies can now create a brand, a totally fake mm -hmm. and controlled uh, experience of their brand through AI-generated people, uh, and they have a lot of followers. So there is a nice research from a Spanish organization, uh, sponsored by Havana, <laughs> <laughs> by the way, uh, that, that is talking about uh, more than uh, 150 fake profiles that support different, different because you know they don't they don't get married, so. They don't do that, this kind of stuff. They don't leave each other like it's happening in Italy recently with influencers. So you can control your brand in, in a much better way. And incredible or not, they have a lot of followers and a lot of people who basically think they're similar to them to some extent, right? So, so that, that, that's strange times, but you were, you were talking about this. So the experience of the brand, it's probably something. Oh. 
I have an HR-driven question. Okay. Sorry, but I'm HR. <laughs> <laughs> so the journey you are sharing is fascinating me a lot. And you touch base uh, uh, the competence of the people and the topic, okay? And I think this is also really important because uh, the evolution is uh, we can uh, it can become a reality only if uh, we are training and developing internally the competencies of our people. So, what would you recommend? What is your suggestion for companies that are uh, uh, starting this process? How can we? Because we don't want lo to lose our people. We want them to be more impactful and being able to drive together with us uh, this change. What would you recommend? So, obviously, it's every company is different, but let me highlight that the most relevant active that a company have is in a person. So, software is in a complementary. And I totally agree with the comment you dropped before, because we are now, our generation, with our way of living, or way of doing what we have learned from our grandpas and the previous generations, we are the ones creating this new stuff, fancy stuff. But the new generations will be with this, and we will see what they are able to, to do, how if they are able to um, improve or not, uh, the society and the things we, are, we have done. But my experience with some companies is, let's start by the most evidential cases. So the most evidence case, so I mean, if you have an, an area, and you have been discussing about customer uh, service, if the customer service is in a bottleneck with people that normally is stressed, with people that normally is um, not happy because the daily basis in a customer service is 90% of the time listening bad things, 10% if you are lucky you will listen something fancy. But most of the time you will be listening problems, issues, whatever they like, but not nice. So start with these teams. So let's put them an assistant to make their life easier and with more happy. I mean, if we are able to introduce ChatGPT, for instance, to create an, a kind of moderation between the public and the company, uh, being ChatGPT able to read the messages, the complaints, the opinions, understanding the tone, the wording, the meaning, and then being able to, let me say, be the first touch where the person is more hot, I mean the client, uh, more rude, more, we'll be talking with this. And then, once it is calm, then if required, we can jump into a person. If not, the person can work with the things we have to do, because the things we have to do are the same. So you have to, to do, and a return, or if there is something wrong, or if the delivery has been delivered wrongly, or if your product has a problem, whatever you like. So you have to fix it. But let's start with these areas. You have some other fancy areas. I don't know, admin staff, or finance. Okay, we are gonna improve or automate some processes. You will see that there are more resistance because this is part of my job and you're gonna put something that apparently is gonna help me, in the midterm, this is gonna replace me. So if you are asking them, and this is an exercise I've saw in a bank. New guy landing in the team, asking for, okay, this is, who is my team? Oh, all of you are my team, good. Can you explain me what are your role? What are your tasks? Frequent, frequency of the task, and who are you reporting and talking to? After then, is create an, a committee, and after some time, there is something in place automating your processes, and you are not needed anymore. So, if you want to introduce this, at some point, obviously, maybe you have to automate because of the cost, because of the evolution of the market, but if you want to introduce some of the AI stuff, let's start by the main painful teams, where they have more issues because they will be the promoters and they will sell the benefits of these solutions internally in the company. It's a cultural change. Totally. Thank you. Last question from Davide. 
Um, I agree on the point, uh, it's very interesting, uh, but uh, my experience is the fact that there is always this narrative uh, that AI will uh, help uh, companies uh, to reduce the cost. Cost means that today we help people, uh, but it's very clear that tomorrow we will replace people. That is very clear. So nobody say, but it's very AI clear. has a cost. No, no, it's a cost, of, of course, but uh, the human uh, will be replaced. So, from my perspective, the answer to your point is that, uh, first of all, it has to be a strategic decision from the company to say, what do we do with people? We replace or we retrain for something else? For example, in my company, just a few numbers, <coughs> we release a new machine platform every three years, in average, okay? Um, we collect uh, 300 requirements from the field around the world about the new generation of machines. But, uh, of course, uh, we, I don't know, prioritize 100. I say just a few numbers, okay? So, um, maybe the strategic decision of the company should be, thanks to the AI, we don't reduce uh, people in the company, but instead uh, we release a new platform uh, every one year or instead of satisfying 100 requirements, we satisfy 300, all of them, because now we have AI that is uh, enhancing people's capabilities. The example of the HMI, the human machine interface, the, the screen where you interact with the machine. Uh, today, there is a cost to do that, uh, but the requirements like, uh, I don't know, uh, HMI for people uh, colorblind, is a requirement that is there, but is always deprioritized. Tomorrow, with the eye, maybe to have the same images uh, in different form based on uh, the, the, the people that is interacting, probably it will be 30 seconds uh, activity. So it's a requirement that you can take uh, from the bin there and uh, you elevate, because uh, it's a 30 second job. So this is, uh, from my perspective, where the eye should help. Not, I'm, I'm a believer that we don't need to replace people. Or, for example, Leroy Merlin, so the, the store, you know Leroy Merlin, is a store for uh, selling uh, screw or okay. this kind of stuff, okay? Okay. So, 50% of the time, the people working there, they get the question, where can I find this screw? Where can I find this wire? Can I find? Okay, so they say, ah, in the line 27 and so on. Maybe that can be automated because uh, very simple, you interact with a chatbot and uh, it's telling you the answer. Maybe the people, you don't fire the people, but simply you help the people to become uh, to an higher level. So I need uh, to change this stuff in my bathroom. Can you help me? So you elevate the people capability. And that is uh, HR is uh, fundamental. Yeah, this is on a different angle and I totally agree. I'm closing, but... Mm -hmm. Time, time ago, years ago, we had an, uh, in a, every elevator, we have a person opening the door, right? Mm -hmm. This person saw all the scenarios when a, when a person or a group of person were jumping into an elevator. Who best than these people to create automatic doors? They saw all the cases. They saw the numbers of times that the door is open. They saw all the scenarios. So these people is laid off or these people is the new ID? For me, it's the new ID. Thank you. Th pleasure. Thank you all. Thank you, Javier, our speaker, and our guest.